by the way, when you're receiving this, when you're attacking, start with neutral feet. It'll be easier for them. Now, when you have a foot forward like this, you still can do it, but you may have to change your angle when you drop. So if he grabs me as a foot forward and I approach, there's, I'm okay on this foot, I'm not okay on this foot. Drawing him is less of a problem because he'll tend to fall over me and then I can, but if he has a foot forward, it's harder because what I have to do is approach and then take a slightly, a slight angle on this side. Okay, you still can do it, but I think it's easier to learn if you both start neutral. Okay, go ahead. That's a perfect example of Ike, and you could do this on a lot of different things. And I won't go into the whole plethora of possibilities where you can draw the person in or, or have proximity to your work rather than you do your work. Uh, but I'll give you one example. Um, cross grip. You, and you can do this with the Kotagaishi as well. Okay. So you'll have this, right? Now, I, I approached him, didn't I? But I could also have done this, <laughs> where he feels like he's on a roller coaster. Is that fair? Oh, yeah. That begins a coil. Now, here's our misconception. I'm going to go to what's called Uriyotosu Odori and Aikido is called Ikkyo. Misconception. Okay? Watch. Coil, uncoil. Listen for a moment, please. Don't cheat yourself of the coil to get to the technique. That's why it's coil to uncoil, because everyone cheats themselves of the coil. Okay? They go. No! Get her to arch. At. Okay. Drop it down and, oh, I'm ready to go, right? No, I haven't coiled. Look what she does when I coil. You see what I'm saying? Coil to uncoil. Go ahead. If he pushes, pretty easy to dissolve that. You don't have to move your whole body. You can just dissolve your shoulder, right? Now you're locked balanced. Not a problem. Okay? And this is the one that's invisible. Okay? Push it. I'll resist it. Okay, relax. Be neutral. Mm. I mean, it's, it's absolutely invisible. He, he knows something's happening, but he, it's totally irrelevant to him. He doesn't even register. Okay, now... Does anybody want to feel the Yes, Jim wants it. He's looking at like, you get out of here, get out of town. Okay, I, ha I am out of town. Okay, so he pushes, I dissolve. He holds, I dissolve. Oh. <laughs> Let's go back to here, strong. Want to try it? Pretty bizarre Absolutely stuff, good. right? Go ahead. I gotta try this. <laughs> it's an easy concept. Again, just something that people tend to ignore. We talked a little bit about this when we talked about the seminar called The Laws of Locking, available from Bushido Gai Budo. Yo. Um, Cumulative locking is a simple concept that has to do with if you lock one thing, the next joint in line tends to lock. So the easiest example of this would be, this is, this is Kotegaish. Now I can concentrate just on the wrist reversal. But it pulls on this, it pulls on this, it pulls on this. But it, dominantly it's just this, okay? If I did this, however, and pull this, now it's still this, but now it's getting to be this, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So now I've got two joints. And then when I lift my elbow, now it's one, two, three. So I have cumulative locking. Now it's easy to control. The more joints that are locked cumulatively, the easier it is to control. 
Now, resist my Shinagi. Don't let me do it. I'm trying to lock his shoulder by doing this. I could easily just lock his wrist, which will take his elbow and shoulder. Because again, my mind's on what he's resisting, right? I won't make you fall, but I could do this. I'm pulling in his little finger, which is creating elbow leverage, which is dropping his head. And at this point, when I lift his elbow, his shoulder feels. That's cumulative locking. Now, if I turn like this, he has to high break fall over that, or he's you know, in pain. Oh.